All right, so in this video tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to do a Photoshop collage portrait. So in Photoshop, I'm gonna to go to File and Open, and I'm gonna open up the master file that I wanna do a collage portrait of, which is this Predator that I photographed at a local convention. And I'm gonna to go to File and New. I wanna set up my collage on a brand new sheet of paper. I'm going to click print and for this one just because it's a tutorial I'm going to go with eight and a half by eleven but since I'm going to be pulling images from Google they're going to be low resolution files I'm going to set the resolution of mine from 300 down to 200. I'll be working in RGB I'll click create and what that allows me to do is not have to grab images and blow them up really, really big so they become well, too pixelated. So I just lowered the resolution down to 200. I'm going to take my original photo with my move tool, move it up, wait a second, and drop it in. I'll hit Command T to transform it. And I'll pull it down so I can pull the corner down. That'll just get it to resize on this 8.5 by 11 a little better right there. That looks pretty good. And I'll hit return. Okay, part of doing a collage is breaking down an image into basic shapes. So I'm going to show you an example right here. I'll go to File and Open. And on my desktop, I'm going to open up a collage portrait here from a gentleman named Derek Gores. And I want to find a good example right here. So you can see what he does is he takes an underlying base photo and breaks it down into values. And within all those values are different pieces of magazines or different photographs. Obviously, we don't have a bunch of magazine pages to scan, so I'm just going to be using a bunch of photos. So within this portrait, there's another photo of another person. There's a D from a newspaper or a magazine article. There's a photograph of other elements. There's all kinds of different photos that make up a portrait. There's a piece of a crossword puzzle. Okay, so that's the idea is breaking down a photo into shapes of value and within those shapes of value are other photos. Okay, I'll show you one more example here if I go to file and open and we'll open up this portrait right here. Got this beautiful portrait of this lady and within her portrait are pieces of tickets, pieces of business cards, pieces of black and white drawings. Then for the eye shadow and the lips, he finds pieces from red photos. Um, up here, he found other pieces from red photos. There's other black and white photography. There's a bunch of people in those photos. So in dark areas of the photo, he finds dark photos. In light skin tone areas, he finds light gray photos. Okay, that's the idea behind this. So to break up this, so I can start to see it in terms of value, I'm gonna hit Command J. I'm gonna duplicate my photo first, and then I'm gonna go to Image Menu, Adjustments, and let's see if I can get that here, Posterize image menu adjustments posterize now based on the level of values the higher the level the more values I'm gonna see the lower the levels I'm gonna see less and less more shape oriented spaces okay so I'll break it down into maybe three like that and I'll click OK so now I can see bigger areas of pink, bigger areas of white, and just simpler shapes in order to render my portrait. Okay, so what I need to do 
is gather a bunch of images related to this. So I want to focus on this eye right here and work on this area. Okay, I'm going to come out to Safari here and we'll go into Google. And let's just pull my Google back into the video here. I'm going to go to Google Images. And since the predator is all about the jungle, I'm going to type in jungle background. Okay, right up here, tools, size, large. I want large images of the jungle. And I'm looking at right here, this dark space around his eye, but I want to focus on his eyeball first. Okay, so we'll come in and find some lighter areas of jungle. Maybe I'll come in and find, uh, let's see, this image right here. I like the sunlight coming through that. So I'm going to control click on the image, open the image in a new tab, which shows up right above the photo. And I don't care about the watermarks. I care about this brighter space in the photo right here. So I'm going to click once to zoom in if I can. And in this case, it's not. So that's the biggest version of this photo that I can use. I'm going to drag it onto Photoshop and then let go. And then I'm going to come back to my photo. Okay, what I'm going to do is make a selection with my lasso tool. I'm going to go around this area right here and kind of shake my hand a little bit, get a rougher edge right there, because I don't want a perfect circle. I want a rougher edge like I ripped the paper. Now all I have to do is stay on my lasso tool and move my selection up. Wait a second and drop it back in. Okay, I want this area right about here. I switch to my move tool and now I'm going to move that section, there you can see it, back up and drop it back in. There's my section of the eye. Okay, there was an even smaller section underneath that, so let me turn that off, where there is a little bit of an orange highlight. So I'm going to click and drag right around here, kind of make a selection around this space right here, kind of go up and around in there. Take my uh, marquee tool or my lasso tool, move that selection up, and maybe I'll come over into the dirt right in here, kind of put it right in there. Switch to my move tool, we'll move that little section of the dirt back up, wait a second, and drop it in. I'll put it right there on top like that. Now I'll take my lasso tool and we'll make a rough selection around the black part of his eye. Take my lasso tool, move the selection up. I'll put it over here in the dark part of this tree. Switch to my move tool. We'll move that section back up and drop it back in. There we go. And I kind of like that. There's the photo. There's my eye. But I want my eye to look a little more golden. So I'm going to come down to this layer right there. Image menu. Adjustments. Hue and saturation. I'm going to drag the saturation to the right and maybe change the hue a little bit to more of a gold color right there. Okay, I want this piece of the dirt. I want that to look a lot more orange or reddish orange. So I'll go to Image Menu, Adjustments, Hue and Saturation. I'll change the saturation up. Maybe add a little more of a reddish orange hue. See if I can get my reddish oranges here, push that over more, and we'll drag that over until I get just the right value I'm looking for. Looks like right about in here. We'll push that even further. There we go. 
All right, now he's got that reddish tint to his eye. Okay, so there's the eye. Now I got this little piece of a highlight from the skin. So I'm gonna close up this jungle. Don't need it anymore. Let's go back to Safari and let's look for other pieces of jungle. So maybe around his skin area, I want more dirt like this. Control click, open the image in a new tab right up here. I can click to zoom in, click and drag that photo down onto Photoshop and then let go of my mouse. And I'm going to come back in right here with my lasso tool. I'll make a rough kind of jagged selection. I can add more details. Maybe I want it to come up like that. And a rougher edge right down in here. Take my uh, lasso tool, drag the selection up, drop it into the dirt. And if that is just way too small, I can go to select menu and transform the selection. So I'll make a bigger selection of this dirt right in there. Hit return, switch to my move tool, and now I'll move that chunk up. Wait a second, oops, on that one. Drop it back in. Now that looks a little too big, so I'll hit Command T and transform that back down. Because I got to remember, I blew up the selection. So now I got to shrink down the photo again. And I'm going to keep that right there for now. Okay, we've got a couple of wrinkles down here around the eye area. So I'll use my lasso tool again. Just click and drag, maybe make it a little thicker right in there. Go up, back down. And we'll go around this edge right here. If I want more selections, I hold my shift key. So I'll click and drag right here, right there. Make a little selection there. Hold shift and make another one right in here. And I'll hold shift key and do a couple more wrinkles right there. And another one right in there. And I'll do another one right down in here. Okay. Take my lasso tool, we'll move the entire selection up, drop it into the dirt right there, and let's move that down into this dirty part right here, lighter dirt. Switch to my move tool, and now I'll tear those sections of dirt out, drag them oops, all the way up, and drop them into there. So now i got a section of wrinkles. Doesn't matter if I overlapped here because I'm going to do a layer on top of that in a minute. And now I want the big dark part of his eye. Okay, so we'll take this rainforest picture. Let's close it up. I don't need that anymore. I'll go back into Safari. And I'm going to come back to a darker shot of the jungle. So maybe we'll come back up to the beginning and scroll back down here you know i like this one because i like all the texture in there but let's see if i can find a better one um i really want to play off of texture and let's see if i can find ah these are all watermarked images so <laughs> let me close that out i'm going to come back down further in my scene here um let's try Let's try this one all right that's pretty good that's a decent size image too so I'm gonna control click open the image in a new tab right above and it looks like this one is actually a download so it won't actually open up in a tab so let's let that download I might use that a little later uh, let's try this one here <clears throat> there we go control click Open the image in a new tab. There it is. Let's close that. All right, there we go. I like all this area. I don't really care about the tiger. I like this area up here. So I'll drag it into Photoshop. Now I go back to my untitled image, and I'm going to use my lasso tool to make a big selection around this whole dark part of his eye. So I'm just going to click and drag and drag and drag 
make a little wrinkle right there, drag it up, down, all the way across the eye socket here, kind of make a little rougher edge by shaking my mouse a little bit here. And we'll go up and up and up, make a couple little wrinkles right in there. There we go. Drag that whole selection all the way up. Drop it into the jungle right there. Kind of like that area right in here. Switch to my move tool. And now I'll move that all the way back up. And all the way back in. And I'll just pull that layer down underneath his eye. We'll put it right in there. So let me turn off my photo. And there's the beginning of my collage. Okay. We'll do a couple more areas. He's got kind of this reddish gold around that eye. So I'll just go in with a bigger selection now. Just start right here. Kind of go back and forth and kind of shake my mouse to get this rougher edge. Right around in here. Kind of go around that edge. And tuck it right back to the beginning uh, let's close up this one and since that's a reddish tone to his skin I'm gonna go in and pick an image that has more reddish tones like um, lava background that definitely has some reddish tones so I'm gonna pick something like um, let's pick something that's a little darker and heavier uh, let's go with also something that doesn't have a watermark all over it. Uh, let's see. I want this one. All right, that's a cool effect. Cool texture. Control click. Open the image in a new tab right above. Click and drag that down onto Photoshop and let go. Now I've made my selection. So with my lasso tool, I'll move that selection up, drop it in here. And I kind of like that area right in there. Switch back to my move tool, move that whole piece up, drop it back in. And I will simply tuck that layer under the previous layer. So now there's the eye socket. Of my predator and I want to do a couple other areas like just this tooth area right here okay so I'm gonna close up this one I don't need that anymore um, let's do this highlight coming right off of this piece of the tooth so I'm gonna go right in here click and drag around make this little highlight area right here and make a rougher edge around the eye, like that. Now I'm gonna come back into Safari and we'll find a totally different piece. So let me click on this again because down below I started seeing some other images that look kind of cool, like boiling molten lava. That's kind of a cool effect, cool texture. Control click. Open the image in a new tab right above. I love that. That looks pretty nasty. Kind of like the surface of a predator skin. Drag it into Photoshop and let go. Click OK there. Now I've got my selection. Drag it up with my lasso tool. Drop it right in there. I kind of like that highlight right there. Switch to the move tool. And every new layer that I drag in... I'm just going to keep tucking them underneath the previous ones. So there's a little highlight on his skin right there. I'll come in with my lasso tool and now I'll do a little shadow of wrinkles right here. He's got these long wrinkly shapes with this reddish tone. And we'll go right around here. Kind of has this reddish area right there. Back to the start and this was good for the brighter areas but not for this darker wrinkle so I'm gonna leave that photo open and I'm just gonna go find <clears throat> some more um, let's take 
this one right here. Slightly different, but I like that. Control click, open the image in another new tab right up here. Drag it into Photoshop. Now I take my selection with my lasso tool. We'll move that one up. Drop it in. Switch to my move tool and just drag it right back up into my photo here. And I'll tuck that one under. And let's do this greenish part. So I'll just click and drag a big selection right here, up and down and up and down and up and down. We'll go around the tooth right here, back to the start. I'm basically making a big selection like that. And I want that lighter texture, this one. Okay, Command D, that was the old selection. Now with my lasso tool, I'll drag this new one up drop it into here like that darker uh, darker area right there is pretty good switch to my move tool drag it back up drop it into that greenish space right there and i will tuck that under the previous ones so this is what he's looking like right now but i don't want this to be the same color image menu adjustments hue and saturation and I might drag the saturation up, drag the hue to the left or right. Let's go to the right a little bit more. And if that's too bright, I can drag the lightness down, kind of like that. And go off of that. I'll click OK. And now I'm going to just do his tooth area right here. So there's a little bit of a yellowish tone in his tooth. And that tooth is above everything else. So I'm going to start at the top. I'll take my lasso tool. We'll drag a nice sharp point right here. Kind of goes around the tooth up and over that edge right there. Get down to the sharp point of the tooth here. Drag my, let's see, let's drag my selection up again. And I'll put it right in this bright spot right in here. Switch to my move tool, move it up, drop it in. And I don't want it to be that dark because that's starting to blend. So image menu, adjustments, and levels. Right here is my brightness slider. I'll just drag it to the left, make that part of the tooth a little brighter. And I'll click OK. And then I'm going to take my lasso tool and we'll do the white part of his tooth. So I'll just click and drag down to the sharp point of his tooth right there. Drag this back up, around, and back to the start. And I want to find a different photo again. I don't want to keep using the same two or three each and every time. So I might come in here and type in satin sheets. Something that has a smoother look to it, like these right here. Um, let's see if I can find some. Oh, this looks good. Because that kind of goes along the length of what the shape of his tooth would be. So I'm looking for shapes as well. Control click, open the image, click right up there, click once to zoom in. And this almost has that triangular shape like a tooth. So I'll drag that into Photoshop, switch back to my original photo here. I've made my selection, so on my lasso tool, I will move the selection up, drop it onto the satin sheets right there, maybe like right there. So I get a little highlight on the tooth, but I also have a little bit of color. Switch to my move tool. We'll move that section of the sheets back up and drop them in. And I'll tuck those underneath. So he's got that little yellow highlight on his tooth and this section here. And that is what my predator is starting to look like. Okay, so while you start to build this up, you're going to get more and more layers. So save your files frequently. 
if you want, you can just start gathering a folder full of textures. I'm doing them one, as, one at a time as I go. But you don't have to do that. You can just keep this photo because later you might like this section of texture or this smoother section. You don't want to have to find these photos over and over and over again. So you might want to just start collecting a folder of textures. Okay, so I'm going to close these up. Um, I'm not going to do much more after this. You kind of get the idea of what's happening here. So that's what I would suggest is grab a folder full of a bunch of images of a bunch of textures. That way you don't have to keep looking for them all the time. Okay, so once I have this, what I can start to experiment with is edge effects. So with my um, move tool, I can click right here on this photo. That's the red photo right there. And with, since this photo is dark, I'm going to go to my dodge tool. And right up here, I want to dodge or brighten the shadows, the dark values in this photo. Okay, so right here I can click and drag, 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 drag. See if I can kind of make a rougher edge right in there just to kind of affect a little bit of the edge of that photo. Now if I set the exposure all the way to 100, it would work a lot better. So I just drag, 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 drag a few times just to break up some of this value here. And I can add my own edge texture. Um, I can also double click to the right of any layer. That brings up my layer styles. And I can click on the words any effect you want, you click on the word. So I'll click drop shadow. Okay, right here I'll make my drop shadow a little darker. Make the size a little smaller. And we'll make the spread a little bigger here. So I can cast a little shadow off the edge of that. Drag this up a little higher there. I can change the angle of my drop shadows by changing this slider, hopefully. Uh, that should be showing me but we'll go with it. All right, there we go, got a little edge effect. I'm gonna take my move tool and click on this one and I'll try the dodge tool again. Okay, there we go. Brighten that up. Since this is a brighter photo, I wanna go with the mid-tones. And I can brighten those up right there, there we go. Add some brights to the brighter areas. I can go to my shadows brighten up those areas right there and just add a few more values here just by dodging and burning like that okay just so I see more definition on these edges I can take my move tool click double click to the right and I can add a drop shadow on that edge right there okay here's the other great thing with drop shadows you can go right in here and just drag and move your drop shadow. So maybe I want it tucking out like that. Maybe I want the size to be a little bit smaller because that's a thin edge. And I can drag that drop shadow right off that edge for a little more definition. There we go. Okay. So imagine putting all those shapes together because I have a ton of detail on this character. So think about that in terms of shapes. I would not try to do every single wrinkle on this guy. This would take forever. I would do big pieces up in here. I would do long vertical pieces right here. I would do a bunch of sharp pointy pieces of dark photos right there. Color doesn't matter. This guy is all kinds of colors. He's reds and yellows and oranges and greens. But by the time I'm totally done with him, he will look like this predator. You can see how that blends right into the photo again. There's the part right in here. You can see how that blends into the photo. But when I'm done, I'm not going to see the photo. I'm going to see my textured elements. So that is the process that you're gonna take for your collage, okay? Gather up a folder of a bunch of images, a bunch of textures, the whole process again, 
just to review it one more time is you take your lasso tool and I'll just do this yellow up here kind of shake my mouse a little bit get a rougher edge right here you know in a real collage you would be ripping paper so I kind of mimic that look by just shaking my mouse get a rough look to these selections right here and we'll go up back up right there now I open a texture so I don't like that anymore um, let's go back and type in let's see golden wheat Ah, uh, like that. That has a lot of yellows and golds in it. That's good. So let's take something like this. Control click. Open the image in a new tab right above. Drag the image down into Photoshop. I'm going to switch back here with my lasso tool. I will move my selection up. Put it right in the wheat switch to your move tool and move that chunk of the photo back up and back into space right there so there is the wrinkles running right up his forehead okay so hopefully that gives you some good ideas you just have to do it hundreds of times um, but base it on the shapes of color and those will blend right back into that photo so when you're done you will have that great portrait of your predator. All right, so there we go. I'm going to close this up. That should give you some really good ideas on how to start with this file. But again, save your work frequently. You get more and more layers stacking up, okay? My last word of advice is if you really liked this area, you don't wanna change anything, but you also don't like all these layers, you can click on a layer, come down and shift click, and then click the pop-up on your layers panel. Oops, let's bring this out so you can see that in the video. And merge those layers together. So now that entire eye socket is one big layer. Okay, so I could take that, command J, and make a copy of it edit transform flip and now i would have the two eyes of my predator looking back at me you know that's one method i don't want to do an exact copy but i could take a shortcut you know design a couple of teeth and flip them or design the center of the eye and flip it not everything but you can see how i've simplified my layers panel now Okay, and that blends right back into my photo. But at the end, I'm gonna have a predator made up of lava and jungle and wheat and all these great little edge effects and textures. So you can see the possibilities that are here. I'll stop right there and wish you good luck. I uh, hope to see some really cool stuff coming out of this project.